Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at six quick modifications for your Ender 3 Pro that you can print at home. So the Ender 3 Pro comes with a lot of tools. Uh, things you're gonna need, Allen wrenches, uh, scrapers, filament snippers, I mean, essential tools to owning and operating a 3D printer. And that's that's great, uh, but if you don't have a place to put them, they tend to make a little bit of a mess. I've got them all put here in the bottom of this bucket, and it is just not a great solution at all. Fortunately, there is a better solution that I found on Thingiverse. This is an Ender 3 Pro compatible tool organizer. Um, this was a pretty quick and easy print. I'll, I'll have the link down in the description for this file here. Uh, but this is gonna take all of these tools out of the bottom of this bucket and put them right where I need them and that's right on top of the 3D printer. So the installation of this particular print could not be much easier. There we go, it's installed. If you're worried about it, you might wanna put a little piece of double-sided tape or maybe a drop of hot glue or something there to hold it in place. I'm not too worried about mine. I'm not gonna be knocking this thing off. We go ahead and load this up with all the tools. As you can see, it holds all the tools that came with the Ender 3 Pro. Uh, there's room for additional nozzles here and then just some small parts. Um, doesn't get in the way, everything's organized. This is a much better solution than the bottom of a drawer. So in my hands here is the second upgrade. This is going to be a filament guide. What this is gonna do is go right here and make sure that our filament creates a little bit more of an arc. This is going to relieve any sort of pressure or bending here as well as up here. This is just going to give it a nice clean arc and uh, make everything flow a little bit nicer. Uh, you just take off this end cap here. As you can see, it's got the proper connector here uh, to slide right onto our structural piece. Filament goes right through this slit here and there you have it. That piece is installed. Our filament is flowing nicely. There's no reason for you not to do this print absolutely no complaints about this design. Right out of the box, you do have some exposed moving parts here. Ultimately, the risk is very low, but you could get something caught in there. Uh, it would end up getting wound up. It could make a total mess for the belts. Uh, so there is a pretty simple print. This, this is just a perfect fit. Uh, it goes right here, snaps right into place. There is a little slot on the back here, which does allow for the belt to move freely. Just keeps everything protected. This here is our fourth upgrade. This is gonna go on the back of our control panel. This is just gonna prevent um, when you're using the knob, you know, you might put your fingers back there. Could screw something up, so this is just gonna prevent that. Uh, this one will require a little bit of unscrewing on the printer. We've got four screw holes here, but still a pretty quick install. It does use the factory screws, so you don't have to worry about getting any parts. Uh, I'm gonna get started by removing these two screws here. Next, I'm going to disconnect the ribbon. Now, as you can see, this is what it looks like on the back, completely unprotected. This is what it'll look like once it's protected. So the next step is going to be to remove these four screws here. Now, all we're gonna need to do is just add this plate back over the top, line everything up, and screw everything back in. Everything's lined up, screwed in. We're gonna screw this thing back into the front.
All right, so as you can see, everything is protected from underneath. There's a pretty good seal along the top. Um, you know, everything looks pretty clean back here. For upgrade number five, we're gonna start looking at some cable management. This rainbow ribbon cord up front, just kind of loosely hang, and I've designed some, some clips specifically to hold that ribbon cord in place. Uh, it did take me just a few attempts, but I got a couple that I could use. So we're gonna go ahead and get these installed. All right, so I did decide to just go with two clips like this. Um, there's a lot of clips that exist out there already. I'm sure there's some like this, but uh, I wasn't able to find any. I was finding some that would grip onto the inside of the pillar. I wanted some that actually gripped outwards. I hopped into Fusion 360 and got a couple of these printed out. Go ahead and install it on the ribbon cord here. Okay, so as you can see, I've got one in place here. Once they snap in, I can slide them up and down the rails as needed. I'm gonna put another one right around here and that should keep everything right where I want it. Again, you can find these files and all the other files in the description below. Take a look at this thing. We've got loose wires everywhere and moving parts. Uh, just like the clips up front, we've got some clips for the back. Uh, these ones do clip to the inside of the pillar uh, because we're dealing with some smaller cords here. So first things first, we're going to slide the bed all the way out of the way and you will see that we've got kind of a knot of wires back here. Here's a closer look at that knot of wires. You can see everything's held in place by a zip tie. I'm going to go ahead and snip that zip tie. What that's going to do is free up some of those wires so that I can secure them in other directions other than straight out the back of the machine. I'm gonna get a couple of these small clips running along here and up the side just to make sure that this power cord stays right where I want it. This, uh, this block here makes it a little bit tougher to get that cord in a really clean place, but it is definitely out of the way of any moving parts now. This final upgrade is probably the one that I'm most excited about. Uh, this is going to form a cable chain, which is going to be able to move freely with the wires, uh, but also protect them from the outside and also keep them in a straight channel. Uh, so I have to do a lot of, you know, pre-working these parts just a little bit, just to make sure they move freely. What you don't want is for them to get stuck with the wires in there, because that, that's just gonna add stress points somewhere else in the wire and it's not gonna do you any good. So just make sure you spend the time and make sure that these, you know, move freely before you install it actually on your printer. All right, so first up is this piece here. This is going to connect underneath. Now first we're gonna to want to remove this top protection piece. That pops off just with a screwdriver really easily. Now we've got one more zip tie to clip, uh, that is right here. So now that we've got our zip tie clipped, we can remove this piece. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the existing piece with our new 3D printed piece. Now just screw these leveling knobs back on. After you get the support arm installed, you're going to want to just cinch that down with a zip tie. There's six holes in total along the bottom of the support arm. Uh, we're just going to be using the front two. We're going to use the remaining four after we get the top piece on. So now I am going to install the end piece here. So these pieces will go together like this. And that's going to provide a channel for all the wires into the chain. Um, and 
and it's going to keep everything secure by locking in place on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and get this piece installed. So now for, we now have both end caps in place. Uh, we just need to add the chain. So I've got this one pre-constructed. Everything's moving pretty smoothly. I'm going to start with the bottom piece down here. Basically there is another adapter that just snaps right into these end holes, just like the rest of the chain. This just snaps into place and then we're gonna feed additional zip ties through the top and attach them to the bottom holes. That's why we left those other ones unplugged earlier. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and snap all of the little chain backings on the inside of the chain. Up next, we're going to install the end cap for the second chain. Uh, the end cap looks just like this. So now we've got the end cap installed. We're going to go ahead and get this second chain on there. Again, I've taken the time to make sure that these pieces move fairly freely. And then same as before, we've got these little clips. This is what the end piece here looks like. This is going to snap right onto the back of the chain. Finally, there is a small clip. Well, I've got a zip tie here, which I'm going to use instead. Well, that's it for today's video. It's time to get back to printing. If you like these upgrades, please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.